Thank you, John. It's a real honor for me tonight to introduce our board member of the year for 2018. And I say honor because I've served with this board member as a board member, but also in the practice of law for nearly a quarter of a century now, which sounds crazy to say. <laughs> but uh, Dave Duffield here, uh, he's the managing partner of our law firm, Duffield Lovejoy, Stemple and Boggs, graduated from the West Virginia University College of Law. And giving back has always been a big thing to him. Uh, both in the practice of law and, as you'll, you'll hear here, uh, in the community. It's led him to be a public speaker, uh, a teacher to, the, to our bar. Uh, he specializes in the use of technology uh, in the law, in presentations, for example. Spoken to large uh, amounts of lawyers around the state since 1992, over 8,000 lawyers, the most lectured lawyer uh, now practicing law here in West Virginia. But tonight is about what he's doing for our community and for the, the people that we serve at the Huntington City Mission. He's been a member of this board of directors for almost 28 years. He's one of the five members of the Huntington City Mission's executive committee, where he serves in the role of lawyer. And in his time, he has originated our director's children's program back in 05, and most recently, the Farmers for the Homeless. And to go off script for a second, I want to tell you how many five, six, seven a.m. Uh, times you'll find Dave with a pot of coffee and a, and a copy of the tax code trying to find a way to help the people of the Huntington City Mission eat, hear the gospel, and have a better life. So it's my honor tonight to uh, bring up my friend, Dave Duffy. Amen. Thank you. Um, folks, we're all a team. As I told the Huntington City Council, we're all in this together. With 52,000 room nights, I told them what that means is when I went to Boston and New York with Chad and depositions, we saw people under boxes. That's what our city would look like if not for this group, the staff, the Huntington City Mission since 1939. This city is, is better by all of us. We don't want to look like that. We want this mission to, to keep on. It was a horror to hear that we would have to stop the third meal a day, lunch. For those of us who've been here a lot of years, we didn't take kindly to that. We fed a million meals in 10 years, but at 250 a day. The opioid crisis started breaking our back, 400 meals a day. We had to lay off eight people, very painful. So we all decided we've got to do something about that. I remember speaking to John Clare across the room, this will not stand on our watch. So what did we do about it? Well, Mitch brought uh, the Let's Do Lunch program. We were all doing, trying to do something. I had to pray about it because I didn't have the knowledge. And I believe that there's only one place this answer came from for the Farmers for the Homeless program. Because no CPA in this room, this city, state, or nation, no agricultural CPA, nobody ever thought of this idea before. I'm not a tax lawyer, I'm a litigator. We fight. We try to work deals out and we fight. But I don't have the knowledge, so I prayed about it. The answer came. It came in this form. In the tax code, if a wealthy man can have a painting and he donates it, a million dollar cost of that painting, he'll get 35% back if he's in that bracket, $350,000. But the tax code says for capital property, if he keeps it a year and a day or longer, he gets to deduct the value of that $10 million painting and get three and a half million back and he only paid a million. Why can't we do that with a cow? I called my CPA, I said, what if we take that cow and we go to the wild rig and get the high priced package costs of this excellent grass fed beef? To make the long story short, once you go through learn more about a cow than ever want to know, 52% of hamburger, 11% sloin, 8% steaks, once you add all that up and multiply it on the retail rate, it came out at $4,600. Now for a moment, remember, when they take these cows 
and they take them to the auction after she has her calf. They get about 700 bucks. Revenue in, they pay income tax. What's that worth? About five or 600 bucks. By showing them this idea and going to GNC Genetics, and that would be Casey Hill, Guy Spriggs, and Mike uh, uh, Facemeyer, who own that company. They have 300 cattle. I explained this to them. I explained it to their CPA. What did that mean? If you keep this cow a year and a day, and it's raised for the Huntington City Mission, and we cut it up in packages, and you don't donate it till after it comes out of Patriot Meat Processing, thank you for helping us and with discounts, you get that $4,600. Do the math. At 35%, that's about $1,600. And there's a state tax credit that Chad and the legislature told me about. It's another 10%. Net result, net it out. Not $600. You don't pay income tax on the charitable donation. That's $1,800. We tripled their yield. And they were excited about that. And we get beef. And we get beef. Yes, and we get beef. <laughs> Motivated financial self-interest is, is something that would have longevity. It would be sustainable. We just delivered the fifth cow today. That's about twenty dollars to $25,000 in beef already we've received. The first donation, 90, about $90,000 worth of cows pledged. That is what's feeding people at the Huntington City Mission right now. When we sit at our board meetings, we look around, you're eating a hamburger, that's what you're eating. And it's a sustainable program, year in and year out. Now that was phase one. Very quickly, I'll tell you the concept of phase two. It should work. With a lot of balls to juggle, a lot of things going on, we work on at the mission, so we do it as we have time. We got a day job too. But phase two says you can't donate a tomato after a year and a day. You know what that's going to look like. Uh, you can't donate it to somebody who doesn't have the tax brackets. I had to work on that. What if we got another cattle producer to bring in that much extra cattle that we don't need? That's our capital. We take that capital and we're working with the Wayne County Farmers Co-op, phase two, meaning we trade that beef in the greenhouses that they have. They raise the produce, chickens, eggs, vegetables. And if we traded them that beef for the produce, the only problem was they can't eat that much. Took a few weeks to think through that one. So instead of a two-dimensional chess game, we needed a three-dimensional chess game. How's that? I called my friend Nikki Thomas at the Golden Girls. I said, y'all got a huge budget down there. You're feeding people, aren't you? Yes. You're buying your beef at Walmart, and not the best beef, but you're buying that beef, aren't you? Yes. Would you consider diverting some of that money and buy the beef from our group? And you'll get the high nutrition value of it. Cousin Lacey Davidson has been so nice as she's a nutritionist to explain the addicted brain, the traumatized brain to recover needs good nutrition. So it's a benefit also. So Nikki said, I'm in. So we're working on phase two for other 501c3s. How that worked, quite simply, on paper, we won't deliver it all the ways, so it'll go direct. But on paper, you take fifty to hundred thousand dollars worth of extra beef you get it to the wayne county farmers co-op they send it down here to the other 501c3s like the golden girls the girl and girls pay the wayne county farmers for that and now they've been paid and they can give us the fifty to hundred thousand dollars worth of produce i think it'll work our goal i told our 36 member board if we could pull this off we could possibly wipe out the entire but food budget for the Huntington City Mission for all of time, feeding tens of thousands of people long after we're dead. Amen. That's the idea. We've already implemented phase one. It work, it's working fine. Phase two should work. We'll report back later on that. <laughs> I give the credit to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is only one way people tell me that that's so smart. I'm not that smart. <laughs> It, it, and the statistical improbability of one person thinking of that, when no CPA in America has ever thought of that, think about that statistical improbability without the intervention when we needed it. Mm -hmm. It came from that prayer. I'll believe that till the day I die. I'll close by saying uh, thanks for everyone in GNC Genetics, Wayne County Farmers Co-op, Ms. Lacey, 
uh, and all of the other folks that have helped us uh, put this program in place. Um, Rick Logan, who spent hours with me figuring out the government statistics uh, on what each part of a cow is, because I didn't know how much they weigh and all of that. And uh, so I, 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 this award I'll dedicate to those folks because that's what we're all about. We're all here as a team. Uh, we're expected as board members to give of our time and our money and everything else. And I, I'm privileged and honored to be allowed to do that. And in honor of this moment, uh, one should put their money where their mouth is. And I'm pleased to give you, John, my uh, contribution tonight, $1,000. That'll feed 500 more meals at $2 a meal.